So we are going into the fourth uh, session and the topic for this session is building a, um, a culture of vision, building a culture that uh, welcomes vision and is not afraid of vision. And um, before, we, before we do that, um, I'll, I'll, we'll go to the Bible and we're going to look at two, two different Bible verses. The first one is from Romans 8, 28. And uh, it goes like this, famous verses. We know that in all things God works for the good for those who love Him. Sometimes when I meet Christians, it's, I have a feeling that we uh, have adopted a worldview that is very similar to a Muslim worldview, an Islamic worldview. In, in, the, in the Islamic faith, uh, they can often say, Inshallah, which means that if God wants, basically everything that happens in the future is up to God. And if that happens, well, it's God's will. If this happens, well, it's God's will. And everything is, is kind of set. Everything is written already. The future is already written. And we are then to walk into the future according to the will of God. Um, however, uh, a biblical worldview is a bit different. In a biblical worldview, the future is not set. The future is not yet defined. God has given us as human beings uh, the responsibility to, to shape the future. And we have that responsibility through our free will and the free, free choice God has given us to do bad or to do good. But still, God has a plan and a purpose for the future. And we can enter into that plan and, and purpose by seeking Him and getting His passion uh, for the lost and for the lost and for, and, and, and for the least. Uh, dreaming of His glory to be revealed uh, all over the world. As we are reading this verse in Romans 8.28, we may understand that whatever happens... It happens for a purpose. I don't think that's true. Not everything that happens happens for a purpose. Because not everything that happens is the will of God. This verse says something else actually. It says that through everything that happens, good things and bad things, God can turn that to something good for those who, who, who love him. That's not the same as, the, as we're saying that everything that happens happens for a purpose. It doesn't. Things can be quite without any purpose, actually. But God has given us a mandate to shape the things to come. We can read from Amos chapter seven, verse uh, chapter three, verse seven. And there is an interesting verse here about the future because it says that surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing His plans to the servants, the prophets. In other words, God has plans. For the future, he wants to do something in the future. He, but he, and he wants to reveal these plans to us, his children, or the servants, the prophets. So, in other words, he is inviting us into his plan. He's inviting us into his purposes to shape the things to come. We can say yes, and we can say no. And here we comes come into what I'm going to talk about. Uh, Building a visionary culture, building a culture on our YWAM basis that is driven by vision, vision driven, that are apostolic. The role of the, apost the, the apostolic is to, is to not only to be visionary, but then to help uh, people going in that direction into the image of the preferred future as we talked about. We are go I'm going to ask two, two questions. The first one is, what will happen? And the second one is, what could happen? These two questions, they, they look like they are uh, similar, but they are not. They are quite uh, uh, different actually and uh, and we are going to make uh, two opposites of them um, I can ask as a leader I can ask the question what will happen talking about the future what will happen tomorrow I can ask the question what will happen next year what will happen the next decade what will happen 
And by asking the question about the future in that way, I'm positioning myself reactive as an observer. And I'm, I'm observing what will happen as a leader from a reactive point of view. Everything that happens, happens for a purpose. What will happen? Everything that happened, God is in control. What happens, happens. Well, I think that too often in leadership, we, we, we ask that question. We've got to stop asking that question. Instead, we've got to ask the other question. What could happen? Because asking what could happen, what could happen tomorrow? What could happen next year? What could happen in 10 years? I'm moving from being reactive to be proactive, saying what could happen, which indicates a position where I start to co-create with God. I start to shape the things to come because God has, has, has given us the responsibility God has, has given us the responsibility to shape the future. God gave man the responsibility to steward the resources, the resources of the earth. God has given us the mandate to preach the gospel to every creature. With other words, we have been given a mandate to act according to the will of God, not to passively sit back and say, what will happen? Rather, engage and say what could happen and by asking that question we got to bring that question to the throne of God and say God what do you intend to do in my city what do you intend to do in my nation what do you intend to do in Europe and then start to as dream about the future start to develop visions start to develop these images of the preferred future together with God asking what could happen so what could happen then well, we've been asking that question many times and, 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 and I remember the first time we, we asked that question in, in relation to Bible distribution in Norway. Now, a few years later, we've been to 200,000 homes offering a free Bible. If someone told me that a few years ago, I would have said that's impossible. But we started to, to co-create with God saying, what could happen if we did so? What could happen if we did it in 30,000 homes? 80,000 homes. <coughs> well, now we have reached 200,000. So what seemed impossible became possible because we started to co-create. We started to shape the things to come. We started to dream with God, asking the question, what could happen? Moving from reactive to proactive. I think that is the best way you build a, a culture of vision, a vision-driven culture on your base, um, actively engaging, shaping the future, actively engaging in seeing images of the future, actively, actively engaging in fulfilling them, and then asking yourself, how can I be a part of that? So that's session four.